Hey guys, this is a continuation of my first video tutorial on how to convert a you know a color image into a gray image or a black and white image. Okay, I was explaining this line number one twenty four. Um, let me increment this little font here so it looks better, so you can you know easily see. So basically, I'm manipulating the pixel. Always, you know, the first value in the array is a red pixel, and the second one is a green pixel and the blue and then RGB value so so I grab those value and then store those value locally in the local variable so first right now just consider a first iteration okay now in the first iteration I, I grab all those information and, and assign I got red value I got green value and, and blue and the RGB value and assign those value into a local variables right here okay and after that remember like the goal is to change the pixel so I basically now calculate the gray pixel um, this it's a little formula right here it is basically it's out there in the internet so this is how you convert uh, you this is the the formula to convert a gray pixel for the image color so basically what, what I'm doing right here is I'm grabbing the red pixel value and it has some coefficient like it's the coefficient for the rate is 0 0.3 to convert into gray I grab the you know green pixel value and multiply that by 0 0.59 coefficient and exactly the same thing for the blue and then the calculation of this whole operation on the right hand side is set to a variable called gray pixel now now I have calculated the gray pixel okay so once the gray pixel is calculated, all I have to do is put now, all I have to do is, you know, assign that value to my individual, uh, you know, the pixel for red, green, and blue. And that is what I'm doing here. So I'm basically grabbing pixel data at index. It's, it, for the first time right here, it's index 0, which is a red pixel right here. And pixel data for index plus 1, which is green pixel and then here is a plus two is blue rgb value and setting all those value to a gray so of course you know this is what happened in the first iteration and then starting from the second iterations of course the index now becomes five and six and seven and eight well um, index become four five six and seven and this process you know uh, repeats until until you know the index become larger than length of the array at that time I come out of this loop of this for loop and of course now remember at this point in the memory of the computer I have changed the pixel of that image that was clicked into a gray background image in but it still is in the memory so now what I have to do is that this context this um, you know the context API has a method called put image data and this image data is not converted remember we, we change the pixel of the image data and we call this image put image data function that is changed but what else I have done here is like when you click this one and uh, you can see that you see the image converted image next to the image that was clicked right here okay so to do that I have I'm using little j jQuery here so basically this is the image element that was passed to the function right so whichever image that was clicked that uh, that's the reference to that image element and I'm asking jQuery give me the offset so basically offset method would give me an array well it, it returned an object that contains two property like top and left the from the how far from the top and how far from the left so once I have the current image offset I I'll, I'll find out the top and the left and I'll assign to this to a local variable and this one right here is pretty, pretty straightforward so basically I have a gray picture canvas that I saw you earlier in my markup this one right here so um, I have a reference to that DOM object and the uh, where do you go? Okay, by the ID, grab the DOM offset by the ID and it says some attributes. You know, the attribute I'm changing is, of course, whatever image that I changed. 
So basically, I want to say the source of that image is going to be the my canvas to data. The, my can the canvas has a method called to data URL, and then this I, I would like to have this you know content type going to be the PNG. I think that by default to data URL, the PNG is a uh, the default you can convert that into JPEG or GIF or whatever, but uh, this is a default image PNG is a default conversion to data URL. So now by doing that, it basically what happens is that this um, image is now base 64 encoded and assigned that value to a source at source property of the image. That's what really happening here. And after that, of course, you know, here's my div container, which is the parent of the image. Which is the see this guy right here? Now I'm uh, by default I don't want to display that image, so that's why I have a style of this one is set to none. <coughs> Excuse me. So I come in here and then uh, at, at this point when all this thing is happening, I would like to show the image, and then I also because I would like to know on which location I want to show. So basically, what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply some CSS here. This is, you know, how you call CSS jQuery. And I would say the left of this one is going to be whatever the offset left of the image is, and I would like to add 210 pixel. I, I had to do that one um, because I know this is the width, and I if I add like a 210 right here, it goes around this, you know, around right here in this the range. That's why. I added that. that. That value has nothing to do, but it's just, just to make it look better how far left it has to go from the image that was clicked. And the top uh, is like whatever the top is. That should be fine. And the uh, most important thing is pos the position of this new image that I just created has to be in absolute position. That way, you know, that DOM object comes into the uh, position that it is, that is right now. Okay. So that is pretty easy, pretty easy, you know, like basically, I mean, you can create a little application, you can ask, you know, you can have people, you know, upload their images or whatever and convert into kind of like, um, apps, kind of like a bunch of other application, you know, you, you use before, S, before HTML5, doing something like that would have been a lot of complicated, you might have to write huge amount of JavaScript code, but with the with the help of HTML5, writing code like that is pretty easy. Let's uh, it runs fine in IE. I'm running an IE 10 browser. Let's run the same code. Let's see how it works. Behave in a Chrome browser. Yeah, it works in a Chrome also. Okay, the last thing I wanted to explain to you, remember like I had this global alpha set to, um, I didn't explain that part, right, okay. So, so basically this global alpha has to do with, uh, you know, the transparency or, or opacity of an image. So basically, um, if you assign, if you, you if your transpa transparency level is set to zero, for example, here, if I set it to zero, so what happens is when my background is white, um, if I click right here, oh, so let me save this one and, and let me refresh this page. So even though this page is, this, this canvas image is drawn right here, but because of the transparency set to zero, it's not visible, okay? But at the same time, if I set it to one, that means opaque, means, you know, it, it has no transparency at all. So if I refresh this one and see there is a no transparency. It's a opaque is good. So the reason I have here what I have done is basically I, I have this anonymous function that I which basically returns a random number in the range from zero to one, a floating number. And of course you know this is the a function right away gets called right away right here and assign the value to global alpha. That's why um, every time you draw an uh, image here, it changes. Uh, the remember like this all the opacity it changes. Sometimes it is like totally opaque, and sometimes it is 
you know, no transparency.